He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. Though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of His appearing will come at last. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart you ask me how i know he lives he lives within my heart take yourself off mute and billy has our scripture for today thank you billy Matthew 16, verse 5, when the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, watch out and beware the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They said to one another, it is because because we have brought no bread and becoming aware of it, Jesus said, for a little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you not perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? or this seven loaves and the, for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the yeast of bread but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Thank you, Billy. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What actually does that mean? Well, we're going to get into a bit of that during the message, but right now it's the reference of nourishment. It's the reference of trusting and believing that you will be fed. This week has definitely, um, there's, there's a, a higher level of anxiety and there's no doubt about that. There's also more opportunity for us to trust that God will provide what is needed. And today for reflection, were we able to get those questions up, Eric or Justin? I'm going to light this candle.
as our candle of intention for this week to hear what we need to hear as comfortable as uncomfortable it might be this candle of intention to listening the questions that are there before us are the ones that we're going to meditate and ponder today what is the one thing you heard this past week that has brought comfort or brings you comfort what is the one thing you need to hear that will bring comfort? Eric's gonna play music for about two minutes and I invite you into a space to reflect. Now, whether you answer out loud or not is not the priority. It's the fact that you at least take this moment right now to look at those two questions. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <coughs> These can also be turned into prayer requests, joys and concerns, moments of gratitude, as well as um, supplications, prayers of request. What is something that you have heard this week? And you can put it in the chat box. If you're with us on, on um, Facebook, you can put it in the comment box. You can also private message me or just leave it to yourself. What are some celebrations? What are some words that have brought you comfort this past week? Christy, I had uh, friends who managed to get their um, COVID uh, inoculation. Amen. That is good news. 
I saw a wonderful documentary on Martin Luther King Jr. and how he talked about achieving what they needed to achieve peacefully and in a loving way. And I thought, oh, how those words fit today. Absolutely. Thank you, Billy. Knowing and hearing the prayers from friends that they are thinking of you and your family and how we should do the same for our own communities. Definitely, Stacy, that is good news. Those are good words. Those do bring comfort. It's amazing how things come together when you don't think they will and then God shows up out of the blue. That is amazing. Definitely. God showing up without us having to schedule an appointment and say, can you show up and do something here? Mm -hmm. That does, that brings comfort that God shows up when we least expect it. Well, some can argue that you should always expect God to show up. <laughs> Especially when it comes time to moving. <laughs> yes. Yes. What are some words that will bring comfort? What are, what are some things that we need to hear? The, the okay, Teresa's sharing that her temporary job is going to last longer. Those are good words to hear. Yes. That something that's happening that was supposed to end is going to take a little bit long, going to last a little longer. That's good. What are some words that we need to hear this week to bring comfort? God has control of us all. Okay, that God is in control. Is that enough for some or do we need to hear more? Some people are looking for, need to hear when they will be able to get the vaccine. Well, I had a phone call yesterday from Helen Weaver and she's home and she's, you know, get, gaining a little each day. And uh, that was really great to hear. That sure brings, that sure brings comfort knowing yeah. that our dear Helen Weaver is on the mend. Move yes. over a little bit and raise your hand so she can see. Elsa, what did you want to add? That we will soon be having music back in our lives here at Pacific Point. I'm hoping the chorale will be allowed to sing again. Oh, I hope you can hear that soon. <clears throat> Christy, oh, there you go. Okay. No idea what happened there, Justin. Thank you. Definitely. Okay. Well, I think it's important to um, say that a lot of us uh, need to hear that um, need need to hear that things will go peaceful. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Speaking There's of what, what's that? Speaking of what she was talking about with music, I I got a chance to hang out with some guys from church a bunch of young guys, and we just hung around and played guitar for about an hour and talk, listened and talked about God with each other, you know? That yeah. is wonderful. It does bring great comfort, and I hope you can do and that again. We did Mother Mary, did you know? We did that song. Awesome. We're going to focus again on our second hymn called Because He Lives. This is what will get us through the toughest of times. <clears throat> God sends his son <clears throat> He 
called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my power. He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all there is Where? 
worth the living just because he lives. Wow. Lord, may the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be pleasing unto you, my rock, my redeemer. As we keep that sweet taste in our mouth, those last line of, we know this because he lives. Let us not rush away from that. May our hearts, our minds, embrace what it is you have us here. And may we continue to thirst for that knowledge that he lives and be quenched with faith and hope. Amen. I honestly don't feel like preaching. I, I think that just says it right there. So what I say, may it all validate that. There's a Sufi phrase, words that come from the heart will enter the heart. But words that come from the tongue will not pass beyond the ears. Our scripture today from the book of Matthew is, talks a lot about when people are stuck in their head and they're just, they're, they're talking details, not the purpose. As Billy had read, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were present. And, and the little bit of the backstory is they're pressing Jesus for a sign. It's the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were well-meaning people who were so wrapped up in the law, the teachings of the law and upholding the law that they forgot about the human part. They forgot about ah, just being present and, and living. They were so concerned and there was this, this threat of power because here is Jesus coming into town. And you know what? Jesus was kind of a rebel rouser. Jesus grew up Hebrew and knew what the laws were, knew the traditions. And he didn't, he, he didn't forsake the laws and say they're a bunch of bunk. He was like, these are to help provide the framework, not the constraints. And Jesus wanted us to be alive with this, to, to enjoy life, not spend our entire life being so concerned about whether we're doing it right or wrong. I can only imagine the level of anxiety that was, that was present in, in the culture of a, of a Pharisee and in their household and, and how they all um, felt about this. We're looking at the danger of a single story. And during Sunday school, we looked at Hosea. And if you had only read the first chapter of the book of Hosea and let that single story determine how the rest of the book went or let that single story determine how the entire Bible is and our view of God, um, I know I would not have picked the Bible up again but there is there's stuff before it and after it. And folks, that's where we get to enter our, our realities into, into the timeline of humanity right now. And how do we do that when we're concerned? There, folks, that if, if we're not concerned about the potential for the unrest, if we are not concerned 
that not everybody is pleased with how the elections have turned out and how things have been reported and how things have gone down, then we're either um, choosing to just stay in prayer, hunker down and pray through it all, or we're not aware that we're, we're at the like a, a, a moment where um, a lot of feelings are exposed, a lot of nerves are exposed right now. And react and respond through 12 they're thinking with their heads they're like hey wait where's the bread we don't have enough to eat we can't feed everybody we don't have enough and and this this isn't going to work out and jesus is like do you remember something about the loaves and fishes we had and he did it on more than one occasion where there were several thousand people hungry and the disciples wanted to say, let's send them home, let them eat, rest, and then come back and then we'll teach. And Jesus is like, no, we're going to see, we're going to see the ultimate in a church potluck because we're going to, what do we got here? What do we got? Let's take what we got and make the most of it. And if you're, depending on where you enter that story, if you're heading, if you're entering it with your head, how can you take five loaves of bread and two fish and make a tuna fish sandwich for every single person here? Now, it wasn't just 4,000 or 5,000 because those were just the men that were counted. Folks, this, the danger of a single story is reading just the words that are there and not going a little further. Not understanding that the numbers 4,000 or 5,000 just represented the men. It didn't include their wives, their children, any of their household servants that came with them. We're talking in probably 25, 30,000 people that were fed with this. And if they were fed with just a small amount of bread and fish and everybody was not only fed folks, there were leftovers. How can we then forget that Christ will do that again and again and again because he lives, because that keeps going. It's that friendship bread starter. It's the sourdough starter that just continues. And we as believers, our job is to continue sharing that. But this is where at the end of this passage, they were concerned about the actual bread and Jesus said, Beware of the yeast, not of the bread, but the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And man, that just probably stopped them right there in their tracks going, uh, oh, you mean like when we sit around and we're doing our own version of um, whatever they did. Like today we, we scroll through um, social media, we scroll through, pardon me, we scroll through um, Twitter or YouTube or Instagram or any of these social medias that just give us these little bursts of information, which are highly, highly inaccurate or maybe just a piece of the truth, not the entire piece of it, not the entire story. So when we talk about the danger of a single story, I want to um, call upon um a TED Talk. And if you haven't heard this, I highly recommend you do it. The gal's name is Chiamanda Ngozi Adichie. And we can, um, Justin, will you put that, uh, or I can, we can put that in the chat. <clears throat> Chiamanda Ngozi Adichie. She is from Nigeria. And she came to the United States at age 19 to study and to go to school. This woman is phenomenal. And she is an, an author. And she is um, very confident and, and, and very real when she presents. And she talks about when she was little and she had been reading the, the children's books that were around and she was illustrating them, <coughs> excuse me, and notice, and her mom noticed that all the kids in the, in the, in the, in her, um, Chimanda's, um, drawings were, um, blonde hair, blue eyed, they ate apples, they ran around in the winter. And 
it was an awakening because Chiamanda had not seen little kids that look like her in these common books. And the mother goes, Chiamanda, you do not have blonde hair. You do not have blue eyes. We live in Nigeria. We don't know winter or snow and we eat mangoes. We don't eat apples. So does that mean that Chiamanda's story is not valid? Does that mean that she is subhuman? That there is something wrong with her? No. Folks, we enter this, this week, we enter this passage realizing that when we get caught up on a very specific track of teaching and think that's how everything is supposed to be and that's all we base it on, we enter that space of affirmation and judgment. Affirmation and criticism. Earlier this week, when Betty and I were working on the service, I said, Betty, you know, it's a lot of people are saying like, God is dead. There's so much unrest. There's so much going on. And, and if God was truly around, it would just stop. Well, I'm going to invite you to this. If you know anyone, or if you're actually feeling that way, ask yourself, do I really believe God is dead or does it just seem like it? And if so, why? Is it because that's how I'm perceiving it? Is it because of my expectations that if God was truly alive, that God would show up and we would not have any of this political unrest? We would not have the National Guard guarding each and every capital of our 50 states plus the U.S. Capitol? If God is truly alive, why doesn't God just kind of come down with his hands and brush away the negativity? Why, why can't he just kind of blow like, like all these flames of, of indifference and anxiety? Can't he just blow them out like birthday candles? God can and does with each and every one of us by trusting in the Holy Spirit and acting as God is calling us to act because we are the abundance. We are the ones to go and sh go forth and share the goodness of that Christ is alive. And because of that, we don't have to take all these matters into our own hands. Sometimes people say God is not alive. God is dead. Because you know what? God only did those miracles in the past. God only does that for, for people who, and then we've got our criteria, right? They look a certain way, they act a certain way, they pray a certain way, they make a certain income, they live a certain way. Their background is, 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 is just completely clear of any blemish, right? We tend to think that, that God, God's old and God doesn't do these things anymore. But you know why we think that is when we allow this pharisaical teaching, well, it's not following the law or you've misbehaved or something bad's going to happen. It didn't go a certain way. So we're going to have this uprising and we get so consumed by our own understanding that we forget the wisdom that we've learned in Proverbs 4, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Folks, we get in our own way. We create more havoc. We learned a big word in Bible study this week, theodicy. And it really boils down to taking stuff on our own. And it ties into what we're really experiencing now is a lot of people are feeling threatened. And I will say that is a valid feeling. It's what you do with that feeling where we run into problems, folks. If someone is truly feeling called to charge into a space that is reserved for freedom and democracy and to do damage and to disrupt. That is not the healthiest way. That is not an honorable way. And for those who truly believe that God is alive, 
that's counterintuitive. This is a tough week, lot, you guys. This is this is tough because a lot of us live on the danger of a single story that that's the only way. And your understanding is the only way. Um, the pandemic and the social distance has removed a familiar way of re relating to one another. And we're all isolated and we're all getting fed just what's coming in. And at this point, it's by what we allow, whether it's your newspaper, your television, your social media, uh, phone calls, tweets, anything like that. That is how we're getting information. <clears throat> and we don't have the same opportunities to sit and talk with one another. And when you sit in that and you're only being faced with that bombardment of stuff, it can be real dangerous. Now we've been talking about on the big national level, folks, I also wanna remind you that this is what happens every single day for a lot of people in their own minds and their own hearts. They think they aren't good enough. They're believing and they are falling for the, the yeast of the, of the Pharisees who say, well, you have failed this, you aren't good enough. You don't have um, the best wardrobe. You don't have the best income. Your house is a mess. Uh, you fail, you should be ashamed, blah, 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 blah. Folks, there are these battles going on in our minds and in our hearts, if not ours, of our neighbors, of our people that we love. And our job, our invitation, our opportunity is to reach out. Folks, relationships are what? The most important thing. And what matters is from this moment forward. And I invite you as we enter into these next several days, kind of on pins and needles, that we remember that God is alive. And you might be feeling called to take a stand for justice, take a stand for mercy, take a stand like Martin Luther King did and try and solve problems with peace because it has not worked with violence over and over and over again, stories over and over again, thousands of years. Violence does not bring peace. It's when people stand up against the violence that peace happens. I asked Eric <coughs> to play and sing a Rich Mullen song called, If I Stand. And I'm gonna invite him to do that right now. just the moon it's more than just this fire here that keeps me warm in a shelter that is larger than this room and there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment and a music higher than the songs that i can sing the stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things. So if I stand, let me stand on the promise that you will pull me through. And if I can, let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you. And if I sing, let me sing for the joy that has borne me these songs. And if I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his home. There's more that dances on the prairies than the wind. More that pulses in the ocean than the tide. There's a love that is fiercer than the love between friends more gentle than a mother's when her baby's at her side 
There's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment And a music higher than the songs that I can sing The stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things So if I stand, let me stand on the promise You will pull me Sing, let me sing for the joy that has borne me these songs. And if I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his home. And if I stand, let me stand on the promise that you will pull me through. That first brought me to you. And if I sing, let me sing for the joy that has borne in me these songs. And if I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his home. And if I weep, let it be as a man. Is longing for his home. Amen. May we go forth from that message that if you stand for something, may you be standing for the fidelity of your relationship with Christ and God and the covenant rather than sacrifices. May we all join this living timeline of saints who have endured. Many of you right here could write books that are, that, that, that are worthy, that, that, are comparable to the ones that were written down of people in back in the Bible times. Your story matters. And there are dimensions to your story that matter. Amen. We started with several prayer requests when we were sharing earlier in this service. And I invite you, are there any joys or concerns we'd like to add at this point? One very specific one um, that I call all of us, we're gonna spend a little extra time praying on that. And that is those who are waiting to attack. It's very, very serious folks. There are um, comments, there are, um, communication rolling around for people to raise up their arms in arms. Do you have any other prayer requests we want to make sure we touch on? Let's pray. God, we come to you on a day that I pray ultimately passes by where the most exciting news is whether or not someone's football team won or lost. Are we going to see a historic season for the Browns? Are we going to spend um, a weekend, an MLK weekend, where normally people have taken a three-day weekend, where I would be at snow camp with the youth group right now? And are we going to take it for some time of rest and transition for those who are um, in high school that are about to take finals. For those who are um, looking forward to a day off of rest before whatever else happens with work. Lord, we, we come and, and bring our prayers for teachers and students and admin and faculty who might be returning to in-person school here in the next week or two. And, 
all the fears that are still being faced around whether or not it is safe? And does that outweigh our concerns and our very real um, interest in what this isolation is doing for the mental health and the emotional health of our students. And, and Lord, when we get so focused on, oh no, our kids are falling behind, may we pause and remember what they're falling behind is what we were familiar with and what they are gaining is endurance. What they're gaining is practical skills on how to get through a pandemic. And Lord, may we all pause and not beat ourselves up for not being how it was when, when that's not how things are right now. Things are as they are and may we truly be present Lord and remember you are here with us and you're going through all of this with us. Lord may we remember we can turn to you and lift up prayers. Some that have come out through this week for Lori's brother-in-law Jeff whose health has taken a decline again. Lord, we come to you with joys for Earl and Kay and their move and the team who came alongside them and how Josh was able to bless this dwelling for it will be a place they shall live for quite some time as they continue to build their relationship. We lift up prayers for Chris Durst, who's had cataract surgery this week. Prayers for Joanne that things keep heading in a better direction. Prayers for Helen, who is now at home, and may she continue to mend and be able to stay at home. And Lord, we pray for those who have lost their lives to COVID this week, those who have been diagnosed and are trying to figure out how to live with it, those who are struggling with it, whether it's a mild asymptomatic case or they're moments away from their last breath, Lord, we pray that your healing comes. Lord, we pray for those who are in the National Guards and other local law enforcements who are on high alert right now for what could happen. And most of all, Lord, we pray for those who in their hearts feel that being um, destructive has a purpose. Lord, we pray for all those people that are in the background of making this inauguration happen. Those from everything from transportation and catering and lights and sound and all those things we tend to take for granted, Lord, who are truly trying to do something historic in a historic situation. And Lord, we pay for, pray for a peaceful transfer of power. And may the office be respected. May the reminder of, of what that office calls one to do is respected. And Lord, for those who are really struggling knowing where their next meal is coming from, where they're, whether or not they will be able to continue living where they're living, Lord, it's those situations where we show up, where humanity reminds us that we have control of something. Lord, we also want to lift up the teachings that come from wise voices in the past, as well as wise voices of today. And may we go forth with peace. May we go forth with an attitude of standing up to unrest and inviting people in to peaceful conversations and acknowledging their fears. It's very, very real, this fear and the anxiety. But Lord, it's how we address it. May we not brush it off and minimize it, rather speak into it. And Lord, when we aren't sure what to say or how to show up, may we remember the prayer that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Evil takes all sorts of forms. And it doesn't necessarily show up as a devil with horns and the pitchfork. Evil shows up 
when we tend to ignore opportunities. Evil shows up when we choose laziness over engagement. Now, I want to say there's a difference here because there's something called mindless rest, which is good for the body and the soul when we allow ourselves to not feel busy at every moment. And in fact, evil comes in when we feel that we have to be doing something. There's always something to be done. Evil can come in when we turn to the refrigerator or the cupboard for comfort instead of a glass of water, instead of walking around the block or walking around our, our room or wherever we're at. One of our jobs as believers is to trust that evil will be identified and to do something about it. I speak very personally firsthand about the evil of sugar in my life. Most of you know how much I enjoy dessert. I enjoy baking. But the reality is that's not where I should spend all my time and energy. The reality of our fear, the unknowing and the uncertainty of this week makes it difficult. There's no doubt about that. We are preparing for a season of repentance, a season of um, preparation called Lent. And I am inviting those who said they want to help plan Lent. And I need you guys. I can't do it all on my own. Please, please, please stick around at noon today. We're going to... Um, We'll finish worship, we'll have some coffee hour, and then at noon today, we're coming back on this link, and we're going to talk about Lent, and I want to hear what, what you need, to, what, what God is calling and putting on your heart to be part of this planning, because this is an experience we're all going through. This isn't me putting on a, a show for you guys to come see. This has got to be all of us, and I can't do it all on my own. So at noon today, we're going to be talking about what we're going to um, how what we're going to talk about over those weeks. We want to put together a kit like we did at Advent, so that will be delivered to people's homes, so they can participate in Lent at home. And we'll also be delivering palms on Palm Saturday. So at noon, show up for that. And we ask you to continue to be faithful and not let the um, the evils of concern, the evils of hesitation keep you from being faithful in your worship through giving. Now, a lot of folks have mentioned that the fact that the offering plate isn't the brass plate going down the aisle makes it difficult to give like you normally do. Folks, you can still give. You can give online if you click that link right there. It leads you to a portal. You can sign up and you can donate right then and there. It is very, very easy. If you have questions, send us a message. We'll help you walk through it. Or you can send a check directly to the church. And if you're concerned about whether or not the mailbox is safe, the mailbox gets checked on a regular basis. Stuff gets brought in and put in the safe. And if you're still concerned about how to do it, Set up a payment through your church. I mean, through your bank. Set up an automatic payment. Folks, we need you to show that you're still in the game and still committed and connected through this act of worship. The amount, that's not what I'm concerned about. But it's your faithfulness and your trust in God that you have a fraction to give back to be the hands and feet in the community and the world around you. Again, if you have any questions about how to give and the safety of it, message us. We'll talk you through it. As we get ready to round up our time today, we get ready for our final verse, our final song. I asked Eric to play this one in particular because honestly, when I woke up Monday, which is normally a day off, God said, no, no, today we're going to do a lot of work as this song came on and it will be um, unfamiliarly familiar in the way that it's brought about. But folks, all week long, 
a reminder that God is not dead. God is alive. That God is alive. Eric? I serve the risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he is always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus. Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. Another is so loving, so that come from the heart enter the heart but words that come from the tongue don't pass the ears and lord may your may all of us be mindful of what we speak this week please join me in our closing benediction do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world all things break and all things can be mended not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>